There is nobody that can help us more than Trump can. I would rather have a presidential nominee who's not been indicted or who has not been convicted. People aren't willing to say something against Trump for fear of losing their party votes. The era of Trumpism has moved to an even darker phase. The former president in legal peril. I am willing to go to jail if that's what it takes. And yet, he still remains the leading Republican candidate for next year's presidential elections. The conservative movement is split between a majority loyal to Trump Let's go Donald Trump! and a minority looking for a way out. Would you vote for Trump in a general election? I don't know. And with the party in disarray, what will the consequences be as we enter election season? This is President Trump's party. Yep, thank you. We've come to South Carolina, one of the early voting primary states, where polls say Trump holds a commanding lead. We're heading out to meet some people at the Greenville County GOP, which is the largest Republican party in the whole of South Carolina. And it's been taken over by a far-right Trumpist insurgency. Its state executive committeeman is Jeff Davis, who openly expresses disdain for so-called rhinos. Everett Hadley. Rhino, censure me. Meaning Republican in name only. Hey, Jeff Davis, how are you doing? Glad you're here. South Carolina, Trump country. It is Trump country. The, they're reporting South Carolina is between what Teflon and titanium, if, as, as in regards to Trump. So, which one is it? I feel like titanium is a bit stronger than Teflon. I think it would be t uh, titanium. Though. Yeah. So. You got, have you got a photograph of the two of you together? Yeah. You got the picture with uh, Donald Trump in the rally on March 3rd? So she, she actually was more excited because uh, Laura Trump was there. So uh -huh. she's more into the fashion than what the, what the ladies do. So I was a fan of Donald Trump from the art of the book, The Art of the Deal. Um, you know, Olga's more of a fan of Donald Trump from, from Olga's as The Apprentice. Although the Republican primary hasn't even started yet, most people here express an undying loyalty to one man and to the many conspiracy theories that surround his candidacy. There is nobody, in my mind, there is nobody that can help us more than Trump can. I, I do wish the Republican candidates would just get behind him. Have you read any of the indictments yet? I have not read it personally. I have gotten my information from different news sources, a number of different news sources. My favorite is Real America's Voice. That's my favorite. A lot of people are quite disturbed by that, all around the world, also here. Disturbed that he's indicted? Disturbed that he still has that level of support, despite all of these indictments. Well, because <clears throat> these indictments, uh, uh, there's nothing in any of these in indictments. They're indicting him on things that are are perfectly are perfectly legal. He told him to find him some votes. That's what he told him, wasn't it? Oh, fine. He can say that. I mean, you know, he he, he can. He so what? Make up votes. He didn't or, say make up votes. Or falsify votes. He votes. said find some votes. Check this. Check this thing. Check this thing out. So I watched a clip yeah, from the Patriot yeah. last night, and I yeah. found out where hold the line comes from. So that's our new expression. We're holding the line. Uh, they're beautiful. Are they functional? Of course they are. <laughs> So you haven't you haven't listened to that tape or read any of the indictments or anything? No, like no, that. because I, it's not, it's not, there's no benefit to me because the people who are behind it are people I don't trust. I don't think he's a criminal. I don't think he would hurt our country. Being attacked by your political adversaries is not unusual. I mean, it happened to Nelson Mandela, it happened to Martin Luther King, it happened to Gandhi. A lot of people in the country find it quite chilling. They find it pretty scary. Well, I'm sure they're all Democrats and rhinos. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, what do you expect? <laughs> Yeah. You're asking questions based on a false premise. Uh-huh. So, what, 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 is, what is it that you really want? Me? Yeah. I just want to do ask you, questions. Do you, well, do you want the truth? Yeah, sure. You do? Okay. Yeah, well, I want to hear what you guys think. So, so yeah. you, know, you know who is the truth? There is one person that is the truth. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus. It's you, okay. Who said that? Okay. Put down. Some here are sympathetic to the far right wing of the state Republican Party, a local freedom caucus, which has pushed some of the harshest local legislation in the country. 
ask you very specifically about one piece of legislation that a number of people in that caucus backed, which is changes to abortion laws here. And the idea that women who get abortions should be prosecuted for homicide and could face the death penalty. Is that something that you supported? I do support that. I do I support it in the sense of I think we ought to have, you know, I would like to see South Carolina as the most conservative state in the nation. So you would support the death penalty for a woman who took an abortion? I don't know how it would be implemented, you know, quite frankly. That's totalitarianism. That's, that's going beyond really anything that exists inside the sort of regular parameters of any democratic state. That's, that's totalitarianism. I, I think people have a choice. You have a choice to practice safe sex and, and the such. So you have a choice, you know, initially. And Donald Trump is the only candidate running for president who you believe will embody those sorts of extremes. I think Donald Trump, I hate to say those extremes, I think what Donald Trump is willing to do is actually speak back, speak out against the establishment. All right. It's extremely dark. Extremely dark. I left with concerns that the group was stifling political debate. And in fact, a group of outcast conservatives, once part of this party, have formed their own independent group called the 4th District Republican Club. They invited us to come and meet them at a local Denny's. Welcome you guys. I'm Linda Garner. Hi, Linda. 4th District. Oh, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice you meeting you. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Oliver. Yeah. This is Tom. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing? Good hey. to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Many here have been committed Republicans for decades. A lot of people in this room were very active in the Greenville County Republican Party. And two years ago, uh, they got new leadership. Several of us didn't really feel welcome there. That group is a little bit too extreme for you. Um, yes, a little bit extreme. Do you think that's a consequence of Donald Trump? These guys are very, very loyal to him. Yeah, I don't understand why there's the fi that feeling is there. Would you vote for Trump in a general election? I don't know. Their actions speak words and a lot of volume, so yeah. A lot of volume. A lot of volume, yeah, absolutely. I do appreciate you guys coming. And I went on your site today and read some of your publications and was very impressed. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. To be a the group had invited a state Republican representative called Jason Elliott to speak. He's also the first openly gay person to be elected to the legislature in South Carolina. Some of those folks in the county GOP here are talking about absolute undying loyalty to Donald Trump. The idea that voting for anybody else is essentially disloyal. You must feel uncomfortable yeah. with that. Well, that's not the way the Republican Party works, and that's not the way uh, democracy with a you know, little d works. If we were to subscribe to the viewpoint that, it's, that we, it's disloyal and we need to coronate somebody, we might as well just cancel all the primaries. It, elections are about the future, and if we relitigate the 2020 election, and uh, if we relitigate January 6th, the Republicans are going to have a hard time regaining the White House. Would you still vote for Donald Trump if he's the nominee then? I'm voting for the nominee of the Republican Party. So you would still yeah. vote for Donald Trump? Yeah. Yeah. That sentiment was expressed by most people I spoke to here. And although this is a staunchly conservative part of the state, there are local Democrats trying to change that. In the nearby small town of Pickens, in an unusual move, Trump took over the entire downtown to hold a rally and left the county with almost $40,000 worth of bills. The local Democrats are led by Richard Byrd and Claiborne Linville, and they've actually increased their membership in recent years. Are you ready, Richard? I'm Richard. Nice to meet you, Richard. This I'm Oliver. Alone, Democrat on county Hi, I'm Claiborne. Presidential year, I tried to compare, you know, apples to apples here, presidential year in 16 to uh, 2020, and huge increase for us. So the Trump era, in some respects, is kind of bolstered Democratic turnout in what is a pretty conservative part of the country. Well, of course, you hate to give him credit for, for anything, <laughs> except maybe the wrongdoing. But yeah, I'm sure that's, that's been a part of it. Behind the courthouse where he spoke is a war memorial commemorating residents who were killed. It's, it's really frustrating and it's certainly disrespectful to speak at a place so close to where these county residents are honored. Do you think colleagues of yours on the council and in the county party who are fearful about actually expressing their honest opinions about Donald Trump? 
I think so. I think in private, I'm able to have co open conversations with people that they can have with me that they will not say out loud. But I think part of the reason that his um, rally here has been paid for and brushed aside is because people aren't willing to say something against Trump for fear of losing their party votes. We did not hold Richard Nixon accountable 50 years ago, and this is part of what's been wrought as a result of that. And if we don't hold this person accountable now, I can't even imagine how bad the next iteration of this kind of behavior for this nation and the effects, the ripple effect throughout the world will be. It's got to be done. My last stop was a drive down to Charleston for a rally with Donald Trump. Merchandise branded with Trump's mugshot was selling fast. That is, uh, that'll be 140. Come on, all shirts are 10 bucks, y'all. Medium, come on, honey, you act like you buy a car. The Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has become a superstar at these events now, which are no longer really about the party, but about one man and the political and legal chaos that surrounds him. And she, like Trump, is claiming this primary is already over. Just wanted to ask you some reports saying that you're encouraging the rest of the Republican presidential primary field to drop out the race, is that right? Oh, absolutely. I think the American people are making it clear that they want President Trump back, so the debate's pretty much over. If you see Hasn't been a polling, single ballot cast in this primary yet, though. You see all the polling. You can ask, hey, are you guys supporting President Trump? President oh, yeah. Trump? Yeah. We're at a Trump rally, so one would expect that. Basically your position that this party is Trump's party, there's no room for debate, no room to discussion. This is President Trump's party. Yep, thank you. <laughs> That's my president! Yeah! Let's go Donald Trump! Yeah! Well, we're going to win that primary big. You know, we won the state twice by record numbers. It's not really my job as a journalist to predict the outcome of elections, but during my time in South Carolina, I've seen very little evidence that anybody else has much of a chance of securing the nomination here. A lot of people are now saying the Republican Party has essentially become a kind of personality around Donald Trump. It's becoming increasingly hard to find any evidence suggesting the contrary. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon. Get out of here.